a disaster of epic proportions. This was the story from Nigeria south to the north. Bielsa, Delta, Edo, Rivers, Lagos, Imo, Kogi, Jigawa, Adamawa were the worst hit states. The intensity became obvious from mid-2022 to October. Massive floods submerging homes and businesses. In all, over 500,000 hectares of farmlands and crops were destroyed. The human cost, even worse. About 600 people lost their lives, and more than 1.4 million others were displaced in a disaster that has been described by experts as the worst Nigeria has experienced since 2012. And this is the first time in history that we have uh, cold sea surface temperature in the Southeast Pacific, which is uh, considered to be La Nina, uh, happening for three consecutive years, 2020, 2021, and present year. And this is associated with enhanced rainfall activities, which now triggers uh, a lot of floods around uh, the country. Why those of us who are within the agencies or government that are releasing information, forecast or prediction ahead of time before the flooding starts, are doing our own bit. And we have not seen any commensurate action from the other actors or other tiers of government where the disasters are taking place. The disaster was linked to the release of excess water from the Lagdo Dam in northern Cameroon. Heavy rainfalls, overflow of local rivers, and the impact of climate change. Conscious of the ecological vulnerabilities in different parts of the country, Nigeria had, in 1981, created the Ecological Fund, an intervention fund to address various ecological challenges in the country. The aim was to devote a pool of money to projects that would ameliorate serious environmental problems nationwide. The mission of the office is as follows. One, to sustain the facilitation of quality, timely, efficient, and effective implementation of all Mr. President's approved projects. Data from the monthly Federation Account Allocation Committee show that between 2012 and 2021, Nigeria set aside 548 billion naira for the derivation and ecological funding account. The funds, according to an audit report by the Nigeria Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, NATI, have either been embezzled or diverted by government's beneficiary agencies over the years. Based on the attachment you submitted to my principal, the governor, on the letter I sent to him, of course, we observe a lot of discrepancies, even with the re most recent disbursement made from 2021 to date. Everybody has seen it as an idle fund. And now we are calling all of us, let's sit down. Let us allow the whole world, the whole country to know, even on our side, so as, as a national assembly, to know that it's not an idle fund. This is perhaps why the Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, had in a letter in October, backed by reports of ravaging flooding in some parts of the country, called on President Muhammad Buhari to thoroughly investigate how the ecological funds were spent by governments at all levels from 2001 to date. The House of Representative members also raised concerns that state and federal authorities have been diverting ecological funds and in June launched a probe into the use of the fund over the past 10 years. If the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria could send to us a compendium of how he spent the ecological money under his administration. I don't now see anyone, any institution, that should refuse the invitation of this committee. With proper management and deployment of the funds, dams and reservoirs could have been built, water bodies could have been dredged or expanded, and the deaths and destruction of 2022 could possibly have been less. But with the effects of climate change, 
an already bad situation has been exacerbated, jeopardizing livelihoods and forcing more people into poverty. The extreme weather events have reduced crop yield for farmers and also increased the number of diseases and preventable deaths among Nigerians, putting a strain on the country's healthcare system. Malaria, cholera, the century is prevalent right now. It's just so pathetic. I don't even know where to start or even what to say. But this is the situation. I do sleep inside my car. This was why the recently concluded United Nations Climate Change Conference, COP27, in Egypt, was not only timely, but crucial to Africa's survival. Loss and damage finance facility, which is really important because it's about getting finance to developing countries for those kind of losses and damages from climate change that can't be reversed, that can't be just adapted to. Um, really catastrophic kind of impacts, both short term, like l slow onset and short term, like flooding or droughts. The message from Nigeria to the rich nations responsible for the most greenhouse emissions was simple. Fulfill your commitments of $100 billion to the Green Climate Fund as agreed to as the historic Paris Agreement. In order for developing nations to attain their nationally determined contributions towards low emissions and to better manage the effects of climate change in their countries. We are not begging. We are only saying that the global north was ecological debt and that they should pay now. In Nigeria, What's more critically important is the institution of transparency safeguards to ensure fraud and corruption does not undermine any climate change intervention and decrease the scale of adaptation in the country. With 2023 already in the horizon, Nigeria's 2022 climate-related disasters can possibly be avoided if state actors will begin urgently to implement mitigation infrastructures so that those already displaced can have hope of survival. Nkoli Omoudu, AIT News, Abuja.